Hey guys, I've been getting some requests um, on showing you how to do the swirl pattern that I have here on uh, this Harlequin model. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate on a corner. The final thing isn't actually going to have any of the swirl pattern here, but I'm going to use this as an example. So on our palette over here, um, I'm mixing a little bit of Sick Green from Vallejo and a little bit of Magic Blue from Vallejo. And then I just take a little tiny bit of black and kind of add it in for my base color because I want not a really dark saturated base color but I want a color that's just going to accent a little bit of that lighter swirl pattern and then we can always glaze that down later and add some more color to the base so with greens and blues it's just going to be like a couple coats just got to wait for it to dry so you don't <laughs> wipe away your uh, your base layer And once it's dry, you get a nice solid coat. It's a little heavy here on the corner, but that'll be okay. So once we get our base color, which is kind of what the inside of the cloak is, um, go ahead and rinse that off. And for the base coat, I was using a, um, a size 4 miniature Series 7. It's got nice blunt bristles, but you still get a lot of accuracy with it. So for the beginning of the swirls, I take a little bit of the goblin green here and just add a touch of white to it. And this is a uh, Arctic white from Vallejo. We'll, we'll get a shot of the, the paints there in the background here before we end the video. Um, but get a good grip, start from the inside of the swirl and just kind of move it around get the pattern. They don't have to be exact because we can kind of knock them in later. They'll come up from the bottom of the cloak. Add the inside of the swirl. We're going to do about three layers of differing colors. And we're going to work our way up. And then for the final bit We'll do a little bit of a glaze, but this this lighter goblin green is just our basic kind of guideline color that we're putting on. That's probably enough for an example. All right, so we have our lighter goblin green. We're gonna go straight scorpion green from Vallejo. On there, and we're gonna kind of highlight these swirls like they're being lit from the top, and the bottom pieces are kind of fading in. And so, this will kind of start to give a little bit of shape to the swirl. Now, again, it's always okay if you go a little bit over. We have our darker color mixed up on our wet palette, so it's going to be there for us if we need it. So we can kind of trim those shapes back in. We just kind of make sure that we get a nice little bit of a highlight layer. Alright, that's it goes pretty quick. A um, little bit of scorpion green over here on the palette. Um, add some white, about 50-50 to highlight it kind of wipe it I, I use my thumb a lot and so you see a lot of painters will have paint on their thumb to kind of straighten their bristles and then even smaller little highlight layer on the top of these areas again like if you're gonna air air on the side of going a little bit too big on the highlight and then you can come back in with your dark color and trim it back in if your paint starts getting dry like white does I'm, I'm a brush licker so spit works as a good medium to kind of activate the paint and it'll keep it active for a lot longer than the water will the water will uh, evaporate really quickly from your brush and keep your uh, your paint from being usable so if you lick the bristles a few times even with the paint on it it keeps those uh, 
those swirls in. And so I went over a little bit. So I go back to my wet palette over here. I grab a little bit of the, the dark color. And then I get right up on these guys. And I kind of trim in. Make my shapes a little more organic. Less scratchy. I might have to go back and add a highlight here or there. Can make these lines a little bit thinner. Oh, I add a highlight back to this little place right here. So I go back to my palette, grab those, straighten my bristles, put a highlight on there. All right, and then here's where the magic happens. This is glazing. Glazing is something that people have a lot of trouble with. A lot of people are talking about nowadays. So um, I'm going to highlight the top of this with a uh, yellow glaze. So what I want to do is I want to add some water to my palette and I've got some yellow. This is an airbrush yellow, so it already starts thin. So you don't have to add a ton of water to it, but you really, you do want it to be pretty thin. And then the brush load is the second part of it. Once we have our thin paint, I'll take my thumb. You see how watery that is? It's run down the cracks of my hand. Once I unload it, think of like a dry brush. You can go back over the top. You see how that yellow just really punches the green that's in there because yellow is a natural highlight for green so that scorpion green with a little bit of white in it is really starting to just bring those little swirls out and that's quick that's all you have to do that's the same thing that was done on this top lip maybe wait for that to dry and put another layer on if you want to get that really stark kind of yellow contrast we're going to do the same thing with some magic blue add some water to my palette Grab this blue, get it runny to where it kind of pulls in on itself. Unload your brush. Wipe it and then just barely add some blue. And you see how that shadow kind of appears slowly? Yeah, a little bit more. This might be a little bit heavier, but. The blue is interacting with the layers underneath giving you kind of that natural shadow there and that's it that's all I do for my swirls pretty much the same thing on the diamonds going back I don't do any glaze layers on the diamonds I just do the highlights that you've seen um, but, but yeah uh, if you have any questions or anything like that feel free to comment um, I'd be happy to answer them. and we'll see you next time